key issues on sandy soils are low fertility uh, generally, particularly um, down in the subsurface layer. Uh, water repellents at, at the surface, uh, which causes poor germination um, and leaves those soils quite uh, susceptible to wind erosion. The thing that causes the water repellents is basically the breakdown of uh, waxy residues from organic matter at the surface. Um, it leaves a, a waxy coating on the soil particles, uh, which water can't then penetrate through. This results in poor germination of crops um, and then leaves the soil bare, which uh, increases the risk of wind erosion. The bleached horizon, uh, the A2 horizon, further down the profile, is basically caused by the fact that those soils, those, those horizons are subject to a high level of leaching, which washes the nutrients and also the um, organic matter out of that part of the soil profile. The result of that is basically a very low fertility um, zone within the soil profile, which means that roots can't actually grow uh, very deep into the profile. We've got a shallow rooting depth on those soil types. There are a few processes that we can, can undertake to actually uh, overcome those constraints or those issues that we've talked about. Um, one of those is to introduce clay into the soil profile uh, through the process of clay spreading, which um, basically takes clay from the subsoil, spreading it over the top of the surface to overcome the non-wetting layer. By overcoming the, the non-wetting layer, uh, we get better germination of crops, um, increased surface cover early on, uh, which obviously then is able to protect the soil from the risk of wind erosion. However, clay spreading is really a, a band-aid solution. It overcomes the non-wetting, but it does nothing to address the fertility constraint further down the profile. Clay delving is a process by which a, a deep ripping um, implement uh, with uh, angled tines is able to bring up clay from the subsoil and to leave it uh, distributed throughout the soil profile um, to provide sites of nutrition and moisture holding capacity. The key uh, difference between clay delving and, and just a deep ripping process is that generally deep ripping implements are straight shank tine to rip through a compacted layer in the subsurface. Um, whereas the, the, the key uh, requirement for a delving machine is that it actually brings up clay from the subsoil. The key thing to consider when, when you're thinking about uh, clay spreading or delving a, a sandy type paddock um, is basically um, the depth of clay. Uh, is the site most appropriate for clay spreading or is it most appropriate for delving? Where the clay's uh, less than about 60 centimetres below the soil surface, um, that site can be delved. Where the clay is deeper than 60 centimetres from the soil surface, um, that site's really only appropriate for clay spreading. If you are going to clay spread and delve within the same paddock, um, it's important to do the clay spreading first. Also, uh, if there's any rocks in the paddock, uh, it's important to sort of identify areas where there's a fair bit of rock, because uh, delvers just don't like to go through rocky areas. It's important to know something about the clay that we're using uh, for the clay spreading and delving process. So um, there, there are some key uh, characteristics of the different clays that we're looking for. How easily is the clay going to be incorporated into the, the surface? That really relates to the dispersiveness of the clay. Uh, how easily it breaks down once it gets wet and dries out. It's really important to have some idea as to how much clay is actually in the material that you're using to spread or delve, uh, what the clay percentage is. So that can easily be um, assessed by doing a, a basic field texture test. We need to assess is how much lime is in that, that clay material that we're using uh, because lime will uh, cause, or free lime in a sample will actually cause the tie up of some important nutrients for crop growth. It's a simple test for working out approximately how much lime is in the, the sample is just using a dilute hydrochloric acid solution um, and seeing whether the sample reacts by giving a fizz. Typically uh, clay used for clay spreading and delving is, is sort of in the range of 30 to 50 percent clay content. With 30 percent clay, um, claying rates in lower rainfall areas are around 150 tonnes per hectare uh, maximum, so in higher rainfall areas um, they use higher rates. The other important thing to consider uh, prior to going and doing the job is, is how you're going to incorporate the cl clay into the soil. Some of the commonly um, used uh, implements or machinery for clay incorporation are um, cultivators that have been modified with a railway iron welded to the back of it or, um, uh, or grader blades. 
um, uh, other people use offset this um, just to try and mix the clay down as steep as they can. What we found in recent years is that uh, spader machines can mix the clay uh, effectively down to deeper in the profile, down to about 30 centimetres or more. Spader is a machine with um, spade blades fixed to a rotating drum. Spaders have been effectively used to, to incorporate clay and other um, soil conditioners like um, uh, gypsum uh, or organic matter. Um, they're quite effective in mixing organic matter in a green manure crop down to depth. The soils we have here are acid soils and the problem is we have some compaction. About 100 mils, the roots, especially canola roots, go down to 100 mils and then go sideways because there's a barrier there. And this process of delving that we're doing uh, will hopefully alleviate that, bring up some clay and it'll get mixed into the profile. It'll get mixed in to a depth of 30 centimetres. That will hopefully retain more moisture in springtime so we get a better finish. An example of production increases that we have seen is um, uh, up to 60% increase in dry matter along the delve lines as opposed to the undelved area and a 20% uh, increase in grain yield. In certain situations we have seen uh, yield increases that are considerably higher. Modifying sandy soils have uh, significant benefits um, but to get the best results from it you really need to uh, have a good plan.